Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. You might notice that there is no in-game audio right now and also no music from the stream and that is because during both of the live streams covered by this particular video my computer crashed. This was the new computer I was using now but it had an issue that was solved by a BIOS update uh, but for the streams that I am covering in this video it was crashing quite frequently unfortunately. Uh, so that corrupted the original recording of this and I had to resort to the Twitch recording of it which had my voice baked in so I couldn't use that audio because I'd be talking over myself so that's why we don't have the in-game audio right now. And so yeah, sorry about that. But anyway, at the start here we are following a uranium nitride supply vessel that we were bringing over to Phobos. This was to resupply our reactors on board that Phobos station. The reactors are attached to the Attila thruster vessels that we have there. And so we're just trying to make sure that they continue operating. And this had to fit in a really tight slot there and I was worried that it might not fit with all the stuff around. I was pointing out the curvature of the main hab there. Uh, but we managed to sneak this in and actually I had a fair about amount of clearance but it was still a touchy docking and with very little delta V to spare with that vessel but we got the uranium nitride uh, back into the reactors so they could, could continue operating. Actually technically I haven't noticed that the reactors actually quit working when we don't have the uranium nitride in but that's the old KSB interstellar thing that I won't get into. I don't understand how that all works. This is another vessel around Mars that was uh, docking at Phobos. This is another vessel around Mars that we're going to Deimos with and this is a habitat plus a docking node plus a couple of bridge stages with a total of five bridge engines on because I didn't want to wait for the normal stage time of the bridge and so we're using that to try and get to Deimos which is the outer moon of Mars and you can see our encounter there and this is the approach to Deimos the yet another potato moon of Mars and I'm not too sure there's anything useful to do at Deimos but we have so much stuff going around Phobos that we might as well do something. Deimos still has the little spike on its north pole there and we very carefully use RCS to make orbit with that one around Deimos. This is another vessel around Mars. This is a tug that is using the candle engines from KSB Interstellar. These are RTGs that have fuel passing through them. The RTGs heat up the fuel. They're little nuclear isotopes, uh, plutonium I suppose. And the benefit is that storable fuel, the hydrazine, uh, it doesn't produce the efficiency of a full nuclear engine but they're lighter they're also much less thrust but uh, it's better efficiency than other storable fuel engines would be able to provide so that's the benefit. Uh, this is a vessel with Bliss Furry in orbit around Mars that we will also get around Deimos and I needed to make sure that the tug could help us out with that. The problem is where the tug attaches to. I was trying to figure out where the center of mass of this was. It didn't seem like the tug could dock at the docking ports. Well, besides the engines would be on the wrong side if they did. Uh, it did dock at the docking port. They'd be blowing the engines at the vessel. So I decided that we would have to claw the Raptor vacuum engine on the tail there. And so that is what we did in order to make sure that the tug could push uh, Blitz's vessel to Deimos orbit. Otherwise Blitz was just hanging around Mars orbit. Plenty of supplies, just nowhere to go. So we decided to give him somewhere to go. And again, uh, Blitz was another viewer who paid for a trip to Mars orbit only. Uh, but uh, just hanging out there didn't seem productive. So here we go, making Deimos orbit and then meeting up with the existing station that we just put into orbit around it. So here's our approach. These were two vessels that were never meant to meet necessarily. Uh, so it's sort of, well, here we are. It's just better not to have a whole bunch of stuff floating around Mars space without any purpose. At least this has now become a Mars station. And actually the computer crashed during this docking and I had to redo the docking as a result. This is the, that was the second try. Well, not try, but second 
second time around, let's put it that way. I redocked this supply vessel so that there'll be balance, some symmetry, if you will. And so that was that. Now we are around Saturn, actually around Titan, uh, with our expedition to Titan, if you recall from previous episodes. Uh, Dollar Root and Mr. Doobie had stayed in orbit around Titan, while Arthur and Katak had landed on Titan, with many issues involved in that. Uh, this is the amphibious assault ship, as I called it, with the landers on it, and had been previously used by Dollar Root and Mr. Doobie to land on other moons of Saturn. Uh, but this had to get back to the main ship. Uh, I don't know if we... I mean, at least the main ship has a really big uh, rotating habitat, so I guess we can call it the main ship. They're both about equally sized altogether. We had to dump the Titan lander, or what was left of it, after we've dumped the stages on it. Uh, we really don't need it anymore, and it's occupying the docking port. We could have redocked it, but there was no point. As far as I could tell, I would probably use a different design considering all the weirdness associated with it. So we just tried to deorbit it, but it didn't end up having enough fuel to deorbit around Titan. We just needed to get into the atmosphere of Titan below 600 kilometers, but it didn't quite make it, so it's got to be hanging out around Titan for now. I might eliminate it in the tracking station. We don't keep a lot of debris in this save because there's a whole lot going on and I don't want to have it be more complicated than necessary. But yeah, anyway, that's just hanging out around Titan for now. As we bring these two to dock, and this is sort of an epic sort of docking kind of thing, with Titan in the background there, you just know that this whole business had to involve the monument launcher somehow because there's no way we're getting two huge things around Titan without that. But anyway, here they are docking. Let's not talk about having only a single rotational section on board a ship and how that works out. Angular momentum, let's, let's not. Anyway, uh, so there it is, a total of more than 500 tons in orbit, and we are going to have to bring these folks back somehow. They have basically done their job, right? Or what they wanted to do as tourists. So yeah, that will be an issue for another time. Uh, speaking of returns, though, I decided to send uh, another Mars return vessel over to Mars uh, in the hope of bringing some of those tourists back. And here we have a nuclear ion ship there. And what I ultimately called the Hyde, uh, which is an SLS core with Raptor 9 boosters on the side. And for some reason, uh, perhaps I was in a whimsical mood during the stream, uh, for... SRBs. I mean, let's face it, your computer constantly crashing will put you in a whimsical mood, I suppose. Uh, four of the SLS SRBs, and I called this Hyde, the Hyde rocket. Um, I think I also replaced the RS-25s on the core with other Hydrolox engines. I forget, I think I decided I wanted explicitly cheapy Hydrolox engines instead of the regular RS-25s. Again, sorry, no sound, especially egregious when there's a launch, of course. Uh, in space, it's not too big a deal because, well, there's no sound in space, presumably. But uh, during a launch, it's sad not to have sound, but we don't. So anyway, up it goes, and hopefully we never see this thing again. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it had a purpose for this one, one occasion. And there you go, it's, oh, I had the staging issue with the boosters. I accidentally had the Raptor 9 staging at the same time as the SRBs. That's no good. And so I had to rearrange that, then separate the SRBs. So we carried them for a little bit longer than I ought to have. And then the Raptors burned for another 13 to 15 seconds. And then they separated. And these are non-reusable now because they'll be going too fast to try and return anyway. So I didn't have the fins on or anything like that on the Raptor 9 boosters. And then the core didn't quite get us to orbit. And so we actually had to use the EUS to complete orbit. As wonderful as that is. I, I don't even know about the wisdom of using the EUS on this particular thing. But anyway... We did finish orbit with it, and we ended up with about 1,400 meters per second left in order to start our transfer, and then the nuclear slash ion stage would have to finish it. So here's the end of the EUS stage, and separation, 
And then I decided to try and use the ions for a bit. I extend the uh, little radiators, started using the ion engines to see where we could get. But ultimately, that definitely proved too tedious. Of course, we time warp while using the ion engines, but they're still weak. So I turned on the nuclear engine to facilitate our transfer, still needing 2,000, more than 2,000 meters per second. And ultimately, uh, this is one of those transfers we, where we need a mid-course adjustment. So I applied that. And you can see the jumble of things that are happening in solar system tourism. We don't keep much debris, like maybe 30 pieces of debris at most. But that's what it looks like right now. Anyway, with the computer crashes, I got less done during these two live streams. So this will be a shorter than usual episode. So with that on its way, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.